Kids Living in a Country Girl, and I'm going to share with you guys kind of my um, day in the life with our pets. It's kind of windy today, so hopefully the sound is okay on this. Um, <laughs> the puppies are barking. They want their food. So a little rundown. We have eight dogs, two horses. I don't know how many chickens or ducks, but a lot. <laughs> Um, two cats and some fish. So that's kind of the rundown of our animals. And so this is my morning um, getting up and taking care of the animals and feeding them in the morning. So I will show you guys our little family. Okay. So this is one of our new, she was a foster. <laughs> and now she has become part of our family. This is Star. She's still learning. And then we have Skippy over there and our good boy Huckleberry and Kavik. Where is Kavik? Where's your brother? Where's Kavik? So, um, Kavik, there you are. Kavik is over here waiting so patiently, being good. You can tell who has learned better and who hasn't. Star, no, sit. Sit. Good girl. Oh, sit. So we're trying to teach him to sit and wait like all of our other dogs do. But it's not going so good with Star. She's, she's a little bit harder. No, Star. Star, no. Star, no. Star, you need to sit. You need to sit and wait. Yes, you need to sit and wait. Look at your brother. He's being so good. He's being so good. Good girl. Good girl. No, sit. Sit. So these puppies were found in a canal starving, which is part of the problem. Look at Kavik. He's such a good boy. Good girl, Star. Kavik, wait, 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 wait. Kavik, Kavik. There is yours. <laughs> so, um, they have that starving mentality still. Good boy, Skippy. Sit. Sit. Wait. Huckleberry, wait. Sit. Good boy. <laughs> so, um, they have definitely have that starvation mentality still going on where they think they're constantly starving, even though, you know, they get fed plenty now. Um, <clears throat> but two of their siblings actually died before we, um, the rescue was able to find them. And then, uh, we fostered them out. Turned out they had parvo, so they had to be treated for parvo. Um, so we're kind of out of the foster game now for a while because they came home to our house with that. And all of our dogs are, you know, have shot for it, but any new puppies can't come in. So we, um, are fostering them now. And, uh. This is where they go. I'm done. Oh, stay here. Star, stay back. They're learning that they can't, uh, uh oh, go get the big dog's food. Hey, Star. Star. Oh, baby. What am I going to do with you? Let Skippy finish. Let Skippy finish. So they, oh, you can't go steal his food. She has so much drama. She's like, why did you bark at me? You can't go steal his food. You gotta learn, honey. You gotta learn. No, off. You're okay. You're okay. Trust me, Huckleberry could be a lot worse. But he's just trying to teach you respect. All right, so, yeah, they have that starvation mentality. Where they're like, we need food. You want to come with me and do chores, Star? Come here, let me take off your collar. So she has a shop collar because she has become notorious for climbing and getting in with the chickens. She doesn't eat them, but the chicken coop definitely has areas that could be, um, that they could escape from. Come on, Star. Come on, Calvin. You want to help with the chickens? Come on, guys. So, come on, Calvin. It's okay, Star. Your collar's off. Come on. Come on. Here she goes. Come on. There you go. So, uh, they like to come up here and help. <laughs> They're like, what can we chase? What can we do? This area of our house is, or our backyard needs some TLC. <laughs> and then there's our ducks and chickens. So after feeding the dogs, which once they get better, I won't have to worry so much about uh, monitoring. I can just drop their bowls and come on and start doing these chores. But since we're still doing some training and they can't, so here are our chickens, and um, there's our horsies. Bolty, big morning yawn, huh? There's Bolton Penny. 
So um, our chickens, we actually feed them, and I'll do a whole different video on um, what we feed our chickens and stuff, but they get fermented food. So we've got a bunch of new babies. Some real pretty ones, a bunch of baby ducks. But yes, they get fermented food, so um, I feed them in the morning. And, uh, and then their bowls are usually empty come nighttime. You can tell, they love it. So this is the food. I'm trying to do it one-handed here. I know it does not look appealing to but they love it. And we add all kinds of supplements and goodies to it. So, oh, Kavik found a bone. <laughs> we also throw scraps out here. So, and then this, uh, this is their food that they get. I think, I think we have about 30 something or 40. I don't know. Chickens. Little one, you gotta figure out how to come around the other way. So, they will just eat up. I'll change out waters because obviously, waters are pretty gross and dirty right now. And we're getting hot, so we gotta. Make sure they have plenty of clean water. Ugh, I need to do a new system because of our ducks, man. They are so messy with water. If you have ducks, you understand that. <laughs> so, um, this is pretty much where I will go now and take care of the horses and turn on the water so the horses' water starts filling up. And then they will, that will fill up while we feed the horses. In the morning our horses just get hay so it's a little bit quicker but I always prep everything for at night because so often we get busy and we're running like out the door or coming home late so I always prep for the night before. We had a rabbit go um, under our shed here and die and it's oh, so bad so I pulled out the little platform there the other day to get to it and didn't get it back the right way so I can't open the door oh crazy wind Cap it. make sure they're not eating that chicken I wanted to teach them young not to eat hay to eat the chickens there's our babies um I was trying to say I wanted to teach our dogs young not to eat the chickens but to rather you know protect them so I thought since we uh, got these ones as little, they can um, hopefully learn at a young age not to go after them. So, oh, that rabbit under there is horrible smell. I'm going to have to try to get a, I don't know if my rake's long enough to get to it, but. So the horses are fed. Um, actually, I need to put fly masks on because it's getting yolky time. So we'll grab their fly masks. All of our junk. We have a load of stuff that has to go to the dump, but I don't have a big enough trailer to put it in, so. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hopefully it's showing you guys something here. Trying to tell which one's which. Well, I was right the first time. They need to have a tag on them that says <laughs> which one's which. But he wears, he's like, I had enough of this. He wears the extra large and she wears a large, so. Should have gone with my instincts, right? Isn't that what they always say? Penny and Bolt. Oh my goodness. And then uh, there's Kavik. Let's see where Star is. Star! Where's Star, Kavik? Where is Star, huh? Star! Are you stealing eggs? 
Star! I think she went into the actual run. She's probably trying to find some eggs. So I'll prep the chicken's grain for tomorrow, or for, yes, for tomorrow. And then I will um, finish giving him water. Oh, Star found the other chicken leg. Chicken bone. She's like, no, I don't want to give it up. You're not supposed to eat chicken bones, baby. Yes, it's cannibalism. We feed our chickens chicken scraps. Here, give it to me. Give it to me. Thank you. Um, we, we feed them all of the scraps and stuff, so they, uh, they get all of that. All right, let's get to the water. Oh, that water needs to be completely flipped. I do a complete, like, you know, water dump and wash and scrub. Generally on Sundays, because I just have a little more time. Um, on Sundays to get a full clean in, clean out of the water. Um, for the horses, at least. For the ducks and chickens and stuff. It's as needed. But I'm order some things to try to make a better watering system for our chickens because the ducks like I was saying earlier they make such a mess of the water so it's kind of frustrating where's my beautiful silky where is she I don't see her uh oh I am missing a chicken, so I am going to end this video and start looking for her. So, we'll see you guys later. Okay, sorry about that. Um, this, this is a white frizzle, and she's a new one, and I've wanted a frizzle for years. So, I thought I was missing her, and then there's her little partner, the brown one. But, um, yeah, I've been wanting a frizzle for since I started doing chickens, and so... She obviously stands out, <laughs> and so I couldn't find her at first. I don't know where she was, but she all of a sudden appeared again, so, whew, little heart attack there for a second. There's certain ones that, you know, are, are pretty rare um, to get, and those ones I really obviously don't want anything to happen to. Hi. Hi. You coming to see what's up? Want to say hi? <laughs> I love these little ones. So I've found a couple eggs in the process. We got a duck getting ready to start laying again, which is good. Um, our water is full and overflowing, which is actually a good thing because our temperatures right now are pretty hot. And so uh, actually overflowing the chicken water or the duck water, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of a good thing because it gives them a nice warm, cool area to go dig in later. So... Um, they also have their duck pond that needs to be switched, so I'll dump that and put some new water in there. And then not looking pretty. Generally speaking, I would say in the morning, doing all the chores takes anywhere from, uh, you know, if I, if, if I prepped all the waters and everything the night before, like if we have to get up early and I know that, um, I'll have prepped all the waters and things the night before. I always got my chicken and my eggs that I set down on the ground. <laughs> um, so I can get in and out and just literally feed, you know, dump all the feed and then leave. But if I haven't prepped or done their waters the day before or the night before, then I usually have to at least do something there. Um, and it's the same thing. Our horses have one bowl, one trough that's auto-fill. And then they have two that are just manually, you know, there for me to fill. So, I'm going to wash off our rocks so they don't put dirt back in. I always like to keep rocks in the duck pond because, um, and I haven't been keeping this duck pond that full. I actually got to go dump that other water a little bit. Because we've lost numerous little baby chicks because they uh, don't know to stay out of the water. And we actually lost an adult. I had a deeper pond for the ducks, but we've lost a couple adult chickens too. So, do you hear me feeling the water up, girls? 
Yeah. You ready to go swimming? We have an auto feed here for our chickens too. But um, I don't use that unless we're on vacation just to keep it easier for people. I will just do dry feed. But otherwise, I like to do the fermented. Um, it's a huge, huge difference. They're so cute all eating. A huge difference in how healthy they are doing the fermented versus the auto. So, or doing the dry. So, with the auto feed. All right. Go ahead and put this hose back here. We have a couple goldfish in there to try to keep, you know, any mosquitoes or larvas from growing. Or even wasps. How did I not just step on those eggs? Just walked right over. And this is my garden area, but I gave it over to my chickens at the end of last season. <clears throat> and I got a hole in my hose. <laughs> and, um, just to clean up everything after, you know, the season was done. So I'm actually working on making like a chicken tunnel over here. So what will happen is when I open the gate, they will go in down the tunnel. And then I need a gate across, a fence across there where I have those T-posts. Um, I want to get like a little cute white picket fence, wooden fence there. Um, and then they will have access over there as well as they have the whole horse corral. So our chickens are kind of free range. They come in at night but mostly free range. So this is how we do our chicken fermented feed. And I'll do a whole video on this too. But um, we just do a couple scoops. Because right now our weather is so warm, if I leave it more than just for 24 hours, it starts to go bad versus just <laughs> fermenting. Um, so I don't leave it for more than a couple hours. Don't tell my eggs. Don't tell my age. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. I have a few more dogs to feed inside, as well as I have to prep everything for tomorrow for the horses, and then um, prep all the dog bowls again. But that's pretty much it for my morning routine with the animals. So just thought I'd share that with you guys. You can kind of see a little bit of what having a little farm entitles um, as far as work to do. So I probably have, like I said, about five minutes left. Um, that's not including most mornings I go and I clean up all the dog poop and do all of that stuff too. So altogether, probably about 10 minutes more of work to do, but that's pretty much a normal morning for me. I get out here, I do this, I go in, have breakfast, do all that stuff afterwards. So there you go. So with that being said, I'm going to flip this way so the wind doesn't <laughs> mess up the microphone. Um, that is, that's our, my morning routine. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye. Jesus wins.